very much. It's seven minutes past six. You're listening to Good Evening Wales. Felicity Evans and Gareth Lewis with you until half past six. Now, news that's broken while we've been on air. The UK Business Secretary, Sajid Javid, has told MPs that the UK government will consider co-investing with a buyer on commercial terms to save the Port Talbot steel plant in South Wales. Here's what he had to say in the Commons. Several weeks ago, Tata told me, in confidence, that they were seriously considering an immediate closure of Port Talbot. Not a sale, a closure. That would have meant thousands of hard-working men and women could already be out of a job. Thousands more would have been facing a very bleak future. I was not prepared to let that happen. In the days that followed, I worked relentlessly to convince Tata... Order! The, The statement must be heard. The record shows that the chair always facilitates a very full and thorough interrogation. And the Minister, the Secretary of State, would expect nothing less. But the Secretary of State is entitled to the courtesy of being heard. The Secretary of State. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In the days that followed, I worked relentlessly to convince Tata that it was in everyone's interest to keep the plant open and to find a new buyer. I also made it very clear that the government is totally committed to supporting and facilitating that process. This work has paid off. Last month, Tata announced its intention to sell the plant and its wider UK assets rather than to close it. Since then, I have continued to meet with its executives here and in Mumbai. I've been joined in this by my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Wales, and my right honourable friend, the Business Minister. And we've secured assurances that Tata will be a responsible seller and will allow appropriate time to find a buyer. The formal sales process begins today. I've been in contact with potential buyers, making clear that the government stands ready to help. This includes looking at the possibility of co-investing with a buyer on commercial terms. And we have appointed EY as financial advisors on behalf of the government. Commercial confidentiality means that I cannot go into detail about ongoing discussions. However, I will update the House as soon as it is appropriate. And let me just take this opportunity to also thank the First Minister of Wales for all his hard work so far. His support in these talks has been invaluable. There we go. That was Sajid Javid speaking to MPs just a short time ago. In other news today, Tata's already announced the sale of its plant in Scunthorpe to the investment company Grable Capital. 4,000 jobs saved there, but workers are being asked to take a 3% pay cut as well as reduced pensions. Let's get some analysis of all of this now from Paul Mullins, who's a director at Kalanesh, a news and market intelligence provider for the global steel industry. Paul, nice to talk to you again. Welcome to the programme. Good evening, Felicity. In terms of what Sajid Javid had to say about this, uh, potential co-investment on commercial terms. What's your understanding of, of what that might mean? It's, it's a great question. Um, I only heard this myself about half an hour ago, <laughs> so uh, I've been scratching my head with thinking this is, this is really interesting development because, to be honest, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think Mr Javid said himself that he didn't think that nationalisation was a solution. Now, there's a, there's a gulf between nationalisation and co-investment. So what I would say is that any support is to be welcomed, and it just... It does generally sound very supportive, but the devil, as always, is in the detail. So I'd like to know what type of support he's thinking of in terms of co-investment, how long would the government be looking to invest for, and on what terms would it be investing? Right. Uh, it, it throws up as many questions as it answers, but at least the tone is positive. Sure, absolutely, and a significant development uh, to have him say it publicly in the House of Commons. Does it automatically mean the government taking an equity stake in the Port Talbot plant, Paul, or does that remain to be seen? He said co-investment on commercial terms, and those last three words on commercial terms makes me believe that it would be uh, an equity investment. I may be wrong. It may be that the government is just clearing the way for a clean investment with uh, a commercial partner, i.e. making sure that there are no issues relating to a clean-up of the site, a smooth transition, acting as an honest broker, in inverted commons, which is pretty much the role that the Scottish government played in the sale of two of Tata's assets up, uh, up in Scotland at Dalyell and Clybridge, uh, which was finalised only a week ago. So it could be something as simple as that. But he said uh, uh, on commercial terms, which makes me believe that they certainly not ruling out equity investment. Right, which would be partial ownership, would it? That would be my understanding. Yeah, um, OK. And we obviously have to take into account EU legislation there 
uh, which one we, we have to respect. But I, I still find I'm, I'm generally still surprised by this because it does seem to be a veer into out of the modus operandi of the government and most British governments for the last few years. As you say, it's an optimistic tone which uh, workers at uh, Port, Tal Port Talbot uh, will welcome. I guess the question is uh, to what extent there is uh, viable uh, commercial interest in this from other companies. We know that Liberty House has been mentioned quite a lot in relation to Port Talbot. We're told there are other people as well. One of the questions that is being raised, though, Paul, and it's been raised on, on the programme today, is to what extent Tata genuinely wants to find a buyer for Port Talbot, given that it would be a direct competitor to its strip steel plant in the Netherlands? Is that an issue? That, that's a brilliant question. It's one that's been running around in the, the industry for a while now. Um, to be honest, Tata's own uh, rival plant, if you wish, or a sister plant uh, in the Netherlands, Imuden, is larger than that at Port Talbot, and there's a general feeling in UK steel circles, not necessarily on mainland Europe, that when Tata had the two competing plants, which have a great deal of overlap in terms of the products that they make, the, the general feeling is that I moved in in the Netherlands has always been the slightly favoured child. You know, we all love our children equally, but we do actually have a little favourite, if, you know, if, if forced to admit it. And so... The Imwooden plant is larger than Port Talbot, and it is on mainland Europe, which has certain advantages. But Port Talbot is actually a, it's a sophisticated plant producing good, good end products. So it would potentially, with the right financials and the right backing, it could potentially be of interest. What, we would, what you would really hope for in South Wales is that it's sold as a going concern as an entity and not split up into different units. Uh, and just finally, in terms of the Scunthorpe deal, Paul, does that give any sort of hope to, to Port Talbot? Is there anything that's been done in Scunthorpe that, that perhaps, uh, that's been successfully done in Scunthorpe that could perhaps be repeated in Port Talbot, or are they two completely different cases? Well, um, I would say a similarity is that Scunthorpe is producing good long products, so basically rails and uh, steel that's used in construction. For me, possibly the biggest source of hope is that a year ago, I don't think many people had heard of Grable Capital. So they came from nowhere. I mean, they do have a track record of turning companies around, but they weren't um, renowned to be interested in steel. So that gives you hope that the Grable themselves may be interested in parts of the remaining elements of Tata, but it does give you belief that potentially somebody who hasn't yet sort of shown their hand could be interested in getting involved in discussions about part or all of the group. Paul, great to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. That was Paul Mullins, the director at Kalanisha News and Market Intelligence Provider for the global steel industry.